We recently renovated the backyard and my wife noticed this blank chimney wall and she wanted to have something on there so we made this sign. And some of you might say that it's a little bit too small for this wall. I agree. But we'll leave it there for now so maybe somewhere down the line we'll make a new one. And we'll find a new home for this one. But first, let's show you how we made this sign. And by starting with the design, we used Canva and I made it so that it's a two by two foot and we used it together on. And of course, then we bring it into the light burn for the laser where we're gonna be cutting it. Of course, here I'm choosing, we ended up using uh, birch plywood. It's a quarter inch birch plywood for the, uh, the front of it or the design part of it. But then for the back, I use this cedar. This is old cedar fence that uh, we have. We still have many boards left, and I've done a few projects on this. If you want to see some of the projects I made with these uh, recycled or upcycled fence boards, please. And I'll leave a link in the description or up on the top of the screen here. So here I'm just prepping all the wood, doing the edging in our jointer, and uh, then I'll also be putting it through the planer. Now, as you can probably see here, I haven't used the planer in a long time. I had to unbury it there in the corner, find a hose to connect the uh, <laughs> the, the vacuum to it, of course. And uh, for all those YouTubers out there, of course, you always have to make sure that your camera has the right angle so people can watch what you're doing. And I love this wood, even though it was all stained. Uh, it probably had a number of stains covering it using the planer of course I'm using old blades so I didn't care if it dulls in with the stain but just look at these boards how beautiful they are I could use a little bit of a sanding but I decided to just leave it as they are have the you know, more a little bit of the natural patina in it there yet and I just love the look of this cedar and it smells good too so now of course the nice thing with the laser is that while I was doing the backing getting the wood prepped I the laser was cutting this out so now I was able to turn around and grab it from the laser machine and check out to make sure everything fits on this backing and trying to see which way which position would work best so once I got that figured out uh, it was time to cut the backing now there's different ways you could of course you could have cut the backing you could use a scroll saw I could use the bandsaw if you have one I don't have a bandsaw could have used my CNC machine I decided to use the laser because I already had the circle and a program open and everything else so I decided to see if this would cut through the cedar. Because I usually have no problem cutting right through three quarter inch pine so I figured cedar wouldn't be much of an issue but it actually was a little bit harder than I thought. I actually had to go through three times with the laser and even then there were still some areas that didn't seem to cut right through but in the end I was able to get it all cleaned off and uh, here's a sort of a secondary mock-up to make sure everything will fit nicely. Now I did sand the plywood before I put it in the laser but this is just sort of a quick cleanup to get the burn marks off. Now of course I'm going to be putting lights in this thing so I do have to raise the lettering and these are sort of quarter circles that I've designed in light burn as well. Now, I could have cut them out a full circle, but then I would have had to use two separate sheets and left with some in inner circles that may or may not be useful in other projects. So I just used some old scrap pieces of wood to cut out these little quarter rounds. I love the way the light sort of, you know, leaves a shadow now because it's raised. It just gives a really nice look on that cedar. Um, now the lettering and this plywood was a little bit, you know, it's not flimsy, but it will bounce around, especially if it's outside and it's going to get windy or rain on it and things like that. I decided to put little spacers there to help hold it so that, uh, yeah, it doesn't bounce around. Now, I don't know if you noticed in this chapter, I wrote gluing in two different ways. I always find out when I'm writing things and I kind of question how do you write it. it. Turns out there's probably two different, two or more ways of writing it. One being British and one being American, so... Always fun. All right, time for priming and paint. So I'm just using a primer here. Of course, I did leave it dry. It's not like I sprayed it and started sanding. <laughs> there was a, an hour or so, or I followed directions on the can, uh, sanded down, and now I'm going to be able to just put a nice black coat of paint on there and let that dry. And no project would be considered a real pro woodworking project without sanding. We'll add a little clear coat protected from the elements whether it'll work or not I'm not sure but it'll help 
Cedar is pretty pretty giving when it comes to outside stuff. These are the lights I'm using. I'll leave a link down below. They just off of Amazon. They're waterproof, weatherproof, and solar. And you can cut them to lengths that you need as well. I did drill a hole here just to uh, put the light through instead of you know having to clip the little black wire and then having to re-solder them together. If you're at all, just put make a big hole, put the lights through. It'll also act as a drain if water were to get in there because it will have a, a ledge with the uh, design on the front there. So I figured at least, hey, it'll drain out of that hole. So it's a win-win that way. And here is our final setup and we'll glue that on as well. So hopefully we get it right. And I decided to put the writing like a little bit of on an angle compared to the, uh, you know, the boards that are in the background so that when we do hang it up, it'll look a little bit, a little on the angle from the background. And for some reason, I didn't realize my camera wasn't in sight. The lights are working, making sure that works before we glue it all up. But before I glue it up, I decided actually to do the backing so I don't scratch the whole front. <laughs> uh, that always seems to be a thing I do. Now I'm using this flexible strapping. Uh, I didn't have any hardware that I figured would work really well for being outside, especially if it gets windy and things like that. I really want to make sure that it hooks on there. I also made it look like a work as a spine so it'll hold all the boards together as well so hopefully it'll work we'll see you with time and of course now i'm just doing the last glue up putting uh two different glues uh, i try to try to use two different glues in, in case one glue tends to fail for whatever reason especially being outside i used one that's more like a silicone glue so it has that flexibility of course i used a tribon 3 glue as well so it was supposed to be good for the elements uh, hopefully it'll work and uh, we'll have to redo this at somewhere down the line, but uh, just glue it all up using some parchment paper here to make sure that whatever weights I put on top doesn't, uh, of course, mar the paint. So just staying the edge, little final touches here, making sure everything is good and wired properly. And now it's time to install on the back and just making sure it's centered and I was able to put the wire between the crack of the siding there so it's hidden and uh, here is the final result again I know it looks a little bit small there might be either we'll do a different sign move that one to a different area but all in all I kind of like the look of it or I do it again I would also get a different type of lighting where I can actually put it behind the lettering this wire this lighting wasn't flexible enough for that but learn as we go and I thank you if you made it this far in our video. Thank you for watching. And if you like it, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our watch subscribe to our channel to watch more videos that we make here at Dusty Workbench. Thank you. Hope to see you again. And why not check out these videos you might be interested in? And hopefully to see you here again at Dusty Workbench. Take care.